Welcome to the Black Carnivore Podcast. Now, today I am so excited to bring uh, Kelly Hogan, who is just a superstar in the the whole carnivore space. She is a uh, a veteran, uh, you know, a, a carnivore veteran for sure. Been doing this for such a long time, and I'm really excited to hear her story, bring her to you. Definitely go follow her. She's got great uh, experience and great advice. And um, yeah, let's just get into it. So Kelly, tell me about yourself. Hi, Jay. I am so excited to be talking to you. This is this is awesome. Also, can I just, is it okay to say that we have plans to get together in person one day? Yes, absolutely. I'm so excited I'm about that. Me too. We're going to eat brisket. Uh, I plan to eat brisket or beef rib. It's always a toss up between the two. My brother um, has gone to this place in Charlotte called Noble Smoke, and he has talked and talked about it. And he keeps telling me it's going to be better than my favorite place, which is John G's. And I know he's wrong, but we're going to try it anyway. And I will almost certainly get either brisket or beef rib. And I can't wait to hang out with you. It's cool that we're doing this. And then few days later get to hopefully eat some meat with linda salant who oh my gosh i love you both so this is cool all right yeah so. and for everyone i'm always tagging uh, the carnitarian that's linda on um on uh instagram as well so definitely uh, check her out and and what's your instagram before we even dive into your story kelly it's what's kelly, your instagram handle kelly underscore hogan nine mm -hmm. one and that was my handle long before I started doing anything carnivore on there. So if you go back far enough, you just see pictures of my kids. But we talked, I talked sure. about meat even then because, um, well, okay. You asked for my story. I just got off to talking about Monday's plan. Um, my whole life, even as a kid, I was kind of a heavy kid. And then in high school, it started to bother me. So in childhood, you know, I was just kind of chunky and it didn't bother me too much my brother started speaking of my brother he started to notice that my legs were a lot bigger than his and he would kind of be like what is that in poke them you know brothers and sisters you're just mean and then I started to become kind of aware like oh yeah I have kind of big thighs and then in high school I got real aware of it because I was just a lot bigger than a lot of the kids in high school and I wanted to go to the prom. I got invited. And when I went prom shopping, I was even more aware, like, oh my gosh, that's a big number <laughs> for the size of my dress. And I decided that's it. I'm going to start dieting. And this was really my first attempt at any type of diet. My mom was like bomb shell figure and never had to worry at all about, she didn't diet. She ate anything she wanted to and just so she had never had to think about diet. So then she has this daughter who's kind of heavy. She didn't know what to do with that. Um, she didn't really comment about it, thank goodness, or I'd probably have far worse of a complex. But she also didn't know like, oops, it's the sugar. <laughs> and she was giving us so much sugar, but in the name of like sugary oatmeal and sugary cereal, probably like most every mom in the eighties. And so then in high school, I decided this is it. I'm going to lose weight for the prom. And I started eating lean cuisine, one lean cuisine per day. And if I was really hungry, I could also have a pack of carnation instant breakfast made with skim milk. <laughs> well, I, I did lose weight. Oh my God, you're bringing back memories. <laughs> like that's the diet plan. And it did work. I did lose weight and I looked a, a lot thinner for the prom. I still wasn't like skinny or anything, but I looked better. And then we all know what happened as soon as prom was over. I had to eat and I would gain it all back and then some, and then the next event that would come up, I would do this again. And I ended up yo-yoing my way up to 262 pounds. Mm -hmm. Trying, I mean, trying hard. It's not like I ever decided, oh, the prom's over. I should now just go crazy. But that's sort of how that binge cycle works, right? You restrict until you can't take it. Then you binge because you're starving to death and rinse and repeat. Um, at age 25, I was already married. I got married pretty young. And at 262 pounds, I started having my first health problem. So it wasn't just like, wow, my thighs are big. I started getting these boils. And I thought it was because like, am I not using the right body wash? Am I, am I just dirty? What is wrong with me that I'm getting these really intense boils? And if nobody's had one, it's a lot like it starts like an ingrown hair. 
And then it's just deep seated. And a lot of times they would get staph infections in them. And they're so deep that you have to literally go have them drained at the doctor's office. It was awful. And I kept having to do this 25 years old. And one day, Dr. Dunlap was his name. He's still alive, but he's retired. And he said, Miss Hogan, we're going to keep doing this over and over until one of us dies or until you lose 100 pounds. And I just cried. I said, I've tried so hard to lose 100 pounds. I don't know how. And he was old and blunt. You know, but wait, Dr. why was he saying that your weight was causing boils? Here's what he was saying. He said, you are inflamed. He said, I could run a CRP test on you and I could prove it, but I don't have to. I'm telling you, you're inflamed and your obesity and these boils are coming from the same reason and it's carbohydrates. And I'm like, it was 2004. I, like, I don't even know what that means. I really didn't. <laughs> I didn't know what a carbohydrate was. I, I was just young, naive. And so he, he took a few minutes. He really explained it to me. And he said, for one year, eat meat. And if you want, oh, he said, eat eggs. You can have cheese and quote, leafy greens wouldn't kill you. Okay one year and he's like and we'll see what happens in a year and I thought oh I'm gonna probably see you four times between now and then because I have to keep getting these boils Lance but I didn't I never had another one that was 17 and a half years ago so for five years I followed his advice and I did all the meat eggs dairy diet sodas he he was fine with that and instead of leafy greens I did pickles and green beans and it worked I mean I the boils stopped, the inflammation went away. I lost a lot of weight. But then after five years, I still had horrible sugar cravings because of those diet sodas. And that's when I found somebody that you're familiar with. I've heard you mention him before to Dr. Chafee, Charles Washington. He is the man. So I found Charles Washington on October 23rd, 2009, when I was right at five years of this super, almost, almost carnivore diet. And he said, you're still having cravings. I was like, well, yeah, <laughs> is that not normal? He said, you're eating only meat and you have cravings for sugar? I said, yes. And he said, what else are you having? And I told him, well, Diet Dr. Pepper. He's like, oh my gosh, you're not carnivore girl. <laughs> he was funny, but also he knew that's exactly yeah. the problem. He said, you cut those out. You will not have cravings for sugar anymore. And he was right. It was a really hard three days because I loved Diet Dr. Pepper. And my husband was drinking them all the time. Oh my gosh. It's something <laughs> about that sound. <laughs> oh, killing yeah. me. Now I still get that sound, but it's seltzer waters. But when I first found Charles, the carnivores back then, they were not drinking seltzer water. They weren't seasoning their meat. They didn't drink black coffee. They just had steak and water no carbonated water typically that's just how they rolled so I fell in line with them I gave up my coffee I gave up diet sodas I didn't even use salt because that's how they rolled back then just unseasoned meat and water three days later no more cravings and um, you know I kind of owe him a lot between Dr. Dunlap and Charles Washington I should have named my kids after them Ben. <laughs> wow what a story that is amazing i um so yeah i was a part of the forum that wow. charles washington had back in 2000 and i want to say seven maybe yeah. or i think that's six. when he started it i think it was yeah. seven and i didn't show up till oh nine he was already there about two years before i found him. yeah so i was a part of it and i thought everybody was insane <laughs> I, but I still was a part of it for like six months. I read, I was trying to wrap my head around it, but I was like, these people are crazy. So, yeah. you know, I just was like, forget it. And so I didn't try it back then, but I, you know, but I was somewhat aware of it. And then, um, but then, you know, I, I, in 2017, I had been hearing about it and finally decided to go ahead and try it. And yeah, I guess there was a lot of confusion about how you, what you do. So I started thinking that I had to have ground beef, butter, and no salt. Yes. I don't know how that, you know, I came to that conclusion. But yeah, within the next day of starting that, it was like, oh my God, heaven's angel singing. And I knew that 
this was going to be it. I knew I was going to cheat. I knew I was going to fall off. I knew I was going to eat a, you know, a lot more, you know, donuts and other things, but I knew that that was always going to be home base and where I was going to come back to. So, um, yeah, there's something really magical about it. Yes. And, um, I heard you say, I've heard you say before that cutting dairy out was really key for you, right? Yeah, yeah. I hear that from a lot of people too. I am at the point now where I can toy around with it and not have like, so what used to happen is as soon as I would have dairy, I would get acne and get really stuffy nose and just a little puffier all over, just, you know, maybe gain five pounds. And now I feel like that's getting a little bit better for me. So I've okay. delved back into dairy here and there. I know sort of like you with coffee, right? I've, I've come in and out of coffee. Coffee, I personally don't feel like, um, I, I don't notice any negative effects now. So that's pretty cool. But yeah, I'm with you on the dairy thing. If somebody's feeling inflamed on carnivore, I'm like, are you still having dairy? Yeah. Okay. Try it without. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, you know, it's been a couple of years now, so I don't know what would happen if I mm -hmm. experimented now. People ask me that all the time, but you know, I'm like, you, you weren't with, there with me that last night but when, before I went to urgent care and I was trying to sit up and hold my arms up and just try to breathe. Every, oh. Yeah. And I was like, you know, you know, I don't want to go back to that. So for me, yeah. it, you know, dairy is over. But not everybody has such a strong reaction as me. So, you know, I tell people, go, you know, go for it. If it's, right. you know, yeah, it might work for you. Your reaction is mine when people say, oh, why don't you put on a CGM and experiment with some artificial sweeteners? I'm like, oh, uh, you did no. not live that with me. You weren't there for those three days. You don't remember how obsessed I was. So it's not like I think my head would explode, but why would I do that now? I've come too far. I am not going back. Yeah, no, yeah. Not even for a and CGM. Yeah, and I think for people too, it's important for them to get that like, you know, it's not that like, I've made this arbitrary rule, I don't want to do this. It's that I really feel awful, like <laughs> awful. So I don't yeah. want to, I don't desire to feel bad ever again. I don't desire to struggle to breathe ever again. <laughs> well, same. Yeah. And, and I don't know what would happen if I were to have an avocado here and there or have a salad, maybe nothing. Maybe nothing, mm -hmm. but also I don't really care that much about an avocado or a salad. Mm -hmm. I, I did used to eat them, but not maybe because I love them. It was just like part of what you ate with your steak. And now I just get the steak. So if I was longing for a stinking avocado, I would probably test it, but I'm really not. Yeah. I mean, I, I have eaten those things and, um, you know, and I remember like in the beginning, you know, I did have this longing and then I would eat those things and then I'd realize, oh, you know, it's not the lettuce. It was the balsamic vinaigrette, which was yeah. full of sugar. That's yeah. what I'm missing, you know, but like now it's like I, I have no desire for string beans, you know, Brussels sprouts, broccoli. Oh, yeah. Like what? I mean yeah, I have an 11 year old. I'm the one mom probably out there. I'm sure there's a few of us now that I could care less if they eat their vegetables mm -hmm. or not. I have never been like, come on now. I ended up with an 11 year old that loves Brussels sprouts. And so I oh, wow. them for, they smell so bad. Oh my gosh. But she loves them. Yeah. So does my husband. He, yeah. Maybe she gets. Yeah. It mm. I don't know. I don't get it at all. I don't get it. <laughs> But even as a kid, like all I ever wanted was beef. That is always what I ate. I ate it first. That's all I wanted. And, you know, that was always an issue for me. And and like you, I mean, I guess maybe we're in the same age group. I was born in 71. And so I grew up like right on that cusp between, um, you know, between like the the way people used to eat and then like, you know, the eighties. And so like my grandmother would feed me the old style way and my mom, well, she hated cooking and didn't like to be in the kitchen. So, you know, we would go back and forth between like lean cuisines and ordering out. <laughs> so it yes. was like a mess. Yeah. Yeah. That was us. Yes. Yeah. All of the microwave things, uh, pizza, the little hot pockets or the little pizza bites, all mm. of that. Yeah. Yeah. So when you first, um, so now when you went first went carnivore, you, you talked about gaining weight. 
So how did that go? Because you, yes. you know, you went keep, well, I guess essentially keto for all intents and purposes, and it was working and you felt good. So what happened to, to switch to carnivore and what happened in there? Okay, those first five years really weren't keto. It was super low carb, but I wasn't getting the fat from the keto because my doctor told me, don't eat the carbs, done. He didn't say, so you're gonna need the fat. I mean, I guess some people would have figured that out in five years, but I really didn't. <laughs> I didn't. So when I did find the real carnivores, Charles Washington and them, they said two things, you need to cut out the sweeteners and also, what are you doing eating chicken? I was like, is it, why? They said, you need fat, get some fatty beef. Also, my period had stopped during that five years because I wasn't eating enough fat. I didn't know. I didn't have a group. I didn't have a tribe. I just had this one doctor's conversation and I was rolling with it. So I, I was not. And doing how did you, I'm sorry to interrupt, but how did you do that? Weren't you starving? Like how did oh. you go for five years? Like not, you're not getting the sugar as a fuel and you're not getting yeah. the fat as the fuel. So how did you do that? Um, I literally did have protein poisoning and there are photos of me from that time where I look older than I do now, uh, 15 years later. I, I did not know what I was doing. And I tell people with carnivore, it they'll say it's carnivore safe. And I'm thinking, well, sure. I mean, if you're doing it right, <laughs> there's a way to do it really poorly. And that is living off of, chicken all the time that's one way to do it or keep all these sweeteners and so you're still having cravings that's the two main mistakes I made just not enough fat so I really was not doing great when I found Charles I was exhausted I was so hungry and I wasn't having a period and I wanted a baby so that's why I went hunting for more answers you know if I had just been like yeah this is working I probably wouldn't have looked so when I Googled, is it safe? And I thought, is it, are my problems coming because I'm only eating meat at this point? I got tired of green beans and I didn't want pickles. So it was basically having meat and diet soda at that point. Mm -hmm. um, and some sugar-free jello when I couldn't take it anymore. I would just eat sugar-free jello. Lots of rotisserie chicken. So I got some fat from the skin, but I didn't look all that well. And that's when they, they sort of problem solved and found out, okay, it's the diet soda and lack of fatty beef. Um, but what was the original question? <laughs> no, I think you asked me like, why did I switch? That's why mm -hmm. I wanted a baby and something wasn't right. Um, I found it very difficult to conceive without a period actually. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So and without about, enough calories, why would your body be like, like, seriously, you want me to add more responsibility to this yeah. mess? <laughs> yes. Oh, I know. So you asked me about gaining weight. So when I met Charles and they said, eat all the fatty meat you want to eat, go time. So a day I just, I went nuts. I was so thankful and excited to get the green light to eat all the meat that I wanted. So about three pounds of fatty meat per day is what it took. My body just needed it. And I did, I gained weight for about six months. And I hated every single moment of it, but I felt too good and was too happy eating to stop. Every day though, I questioned this, like, this is crazy. I'm gonna gain all this weight back. Well, it was approx it was about 23 pounds. And I know, cause I was weighing every okay, single day. Okay, that's not that much. I know, I mean, right? in the grand scheme of things. It felt, because <laughs> I had extreme like body obsession and right. I had already fought so hard to lose that weight in the first place. Also, if I had known it was going to stop at 23 pounds, I probably wouldn't have panicked. But every week going up a little more and more, it just caused me to freak out. And I see this in people even now and, and I'm like, you didn't eat properly for so long. Your body is just going to hoard it for a while until you consistently give yourself proper nutrition. And then you'll probably feel your appetite relax. At about the six month mark, I realized I actually feel pretty full with just two pounds of meat. And, and I never purposefully, people have said, did you purposefully start eating less? I couldn't have. I was like that level of just hungry. I didn't purposefully eat less until I suddenly realized oh two pounds seems like plenty now and then that weight that 23 pounds did come back off and then I got pregnant <laughs> like almost immediately wow yes. so 
So what kind of fatty meat did you eat? Because I feel like people really don't have any idea what fatty meat means. <laughs> yeah. Now, people, I think, assume that meat just is fatty. Oh, meat mm -hmm. is so high in fat. High in fat. Well, mm -hmm. there's some meats that are very low in fat. If you're going to buy a London broil, you won't see white on that at all. There's almost no fat. So I know that, you know, all steak is going to have some fat in it. But I was eating, like, chuck steaks, chuck eye steaks, chuck roast cut into steaks, cubed steak, plenty of white. That's what they told me to look for. Find a steak that has plenty of white fat on it and then cook it and eat it. And I was like, mm -hmm. man, that sounds good. And, and I mean, that first big fatty steak where I just allowed myself to just eat it, you know, you feel like tingly and warm <laughs> afterwards. Like, oh my gosh, life is coming back to my body. It was so good. And then I did start to see the sunken eyes disappear. And I just started to look more like myself. I remember, um, I have a photo of a time where we were, my husband and I, we didn't have kids yet. This was right before I really, well, I found Charles and really started carnivore. And he was going to take a photo of me next to the river. And I was trying so hard to like pose and give him my like wife smile, right? He's like, where's that? that look you used to always give me I was like this is it I'm doing it right now and he wasn't trying to be mean but when I look back at pictures the life it was just not there I just look mm -hmm. old and tired because I was <laughs> that's how I felt just tired and hungry yeah yeah I can imagine and you know I mean I think it's interesting what you say because they, there are some women who are able to restrict and deny you know despite like feeling hungry feeling exhausted and and so on and then there are others of us who are like you know I, i'll go through three days of that and then it's like all right mm -hmm. i'm done you know so i you know i would have given up like a million years before you i think um had i been trying to do it that way and i even did three weeks of uh protein sparing modified mm -hmm. fast yeah. And, um, and I, even in that three weeks, like my, I didn't notice it, but my mood and general outlook was steadily declining. And then I, um, my mom had given me some short ribs and I made them for breakfast. I ate them and oh. I was taking a break from the, the, the protein sparing modified fast. And then in 20 minutes, all of a sudden I felt amazing, <laughs> yes. joyous, happy, like <laughs> were singing yes. and I was like good god what is happening <laughs> nothing has changed in the last 20 minutes there's no reason for me to feel differently at all right so it was shocking and and I was like I can't I can't believe like this is the fat it is not the protein yes. it is not removing other things like those are all benefits of carnivore but it is the fat itself that just does something in the brain and you you've got to get it in some way or other and i did it the next day again had that amazing joyous feeling and then thereafter i didn't feel different but it you know i just generally felt better so yeah. wow well, when people have asked how did i do that for five years to be fair the first i'm gonna say even first year to two years i was losing a lot of weight just eating meats like I didn't do it too lean. I think I probably did it about right for the first year or two. And that's when I really was losing a lot of weight. But then I think what, what happens, I see this with other people and what happened with myself is the weight loss starts to slow at some point. And the only thing I knew as a child of the eighties, I was born in the seventies, but grew up in the eighties was, well, if you're not losing fat enough, you got to cut back on the fat. So then for the next, for that next two or three years, I just slowly started cutting back more and more on fat and, and I was so hungry and I am actually pretty impressed with the fact that I was able to go that long, even though my gosh, it was horrible for me. But I think I was just for the first time, so excited that I looked more like I wanted to look. like it worked. It really mm -hmm. worked. And, mm -hmm. and it was certainly more sustainable than that lean cuisine mess I was doing in high school I couldn't I couldn't do that but this yeah. there was a lot of meat at least there was that it was better better than the high school thing but 
Yeah, not as good as cuisine thing. That was like that was a real thing. And when I was in high school, my one of my classmates, her mom went away for a week with her boyfriend. So my my friend bought forty lean cuisines, and she (laughs) ate that for every meal. She then later went to um, uh, the Sorbonne and went to like a culinary school in France, and is now like this incredibly accomplished chef. But I'm like. Cool. Where I guess that came from your like experiences with that lean cuisine. Oh, and you're like, never again. I, I just want to take a little a little card table to the grocery store and just sit because they're still selling those things right now. Somebody is reaching in to that cooler and picking up a lean cuisine. I want to just sit there and pass out like information on the carnivore diet. Put that down. Stop. You should not be living on this microwave plastic garbage, no calorie, no nutrition foods. Yeah. yeah. And I just give them here. Here's your steak. Go eat that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. I I totally get that. And uh, yeah, I mean, and when I walk around like the grocery store, I mean, I got to say, you know, coming out of New York has been, you know, really um, an eye opener, I guess I should say. I coming south and, and being here in North Carolina, um, it's so different. And I was kind of looking forward to like having more like barbecue options. Like mm-hmm. barbecue is just not a thing in New York. There's a handful yeah. of places, you know, there's a handful of places, but that's just not, you know, really a thing. And of course, since everyone is trying to lose weight and, and go low fat, like the even the brisket is super lean, like everything is super lean. Uh, grocery stores, like buying meat, everything is super lean. It's been trimmed so much. Ribeyes, you know, I mean, I never see in real life the ribeyes that I see, like, you know, people taking pictures of it on Instagram. So um, coming out of New York, it's really been um, kind of an eye opener, a, um, a learning experience going to the grocery store now and seeing all of these products. I never even knew some of these things existed. But now I can get bacon ends or pieces or, yes. or whatever. Yeah. And there's all kinds of weird liver scrapple mash yeah. things. I don't know what that is. But liver mush. Heard... Liver yes. mush. Yes. My kids love that stuff. They're, they're having some for lunch right now. Liver mush. Yeah. Most brands do put wheat flour in it for people who are watching. But there is, um, I think it's a local brand, Jenkins. I don't know. Maybe it's not local. And they do put corn, but not wheat. So we, I mm-hmm. don't eat it, but they do. Oh, wow. All right. Well, I'm definitely going to have to make sure I look at the packages on these things. But yeah, and I just posted a reel yesterday about, you know, those logs of ground beef, which I've now yes. learned are called chubs. I did yes. not know that. Um, and like what you do with them. So none of these things do we have in New York. And um, yeah, it's just, it's sort of, it's interesting and exciting to kind of see new things and see how, you know, things get done. Yeah. Now you're in, are you in Charlotte? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So you may not see quite the Walmart scene that I do here in Western North Carolina. Um, it's a serious problem. If anybody ever doubts whether or not diabetes and weight related illness is an issue, get on a plane, train or automobile and come to North Carolina. I don't know about Charlotte, but for sure other areas where I live too. go to Walmart. There's hardly anyone walking anymore. It's just scooters those little rascal things that people are riding on and it's just full of processed carbohydrates and soda and it kills me and I'm like these people are not all that old this is not an issue of being elderly these aren't little tiny frail people who just can't push a buggy no no it is quite the opposite of that and it just breaks my heart Mm -hmm. yeah and so when people comment online and say things like you know I think they think I might be really overselling the issue of obesity and diabetes and heart disease, but I don't know where they're living. It is not here. Yeah. I mean, I'm totally with you. And honestly, that is why I do this. You know, my, uh, you know, I grew up in a family where there was uh, a lot of uh, diabetes, obesity, heart disease, and so on. My mother, her life was really constrained by the weight that she carried. And she was in constant pain with arthritis and, um, you know, inflammation and struggling with sugar cravings and all of that stuff. 
and and just all of the things that come with being very heavy and i you know i realized that her you know her life was really um it was not what it could be because of that and i have tried so many times to get her to come keto with me um but you know she didn't want to do it and you know there you go but i i feel like i want to get this message out there she didn't believe it was healthy and and at the time you know her doctors were like no 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 but like it, i i just want to help anybody who is you know, who decided that for whatever reason, you know, vegan, raw vegan, vegetarian is not working to help them with their condition. There's another way you can go the uh, the complete opposite way. And it, you may find that it's a much more sustainable, easy, enjoyable way of reversing those conditions. And um, yeah, and so that's why I like talk about this all the time. And certainly in the black community, there is a, uh, you know, a rampant problem with, uh, you know, with obesity, with diabetes, with these metabolic disorders that are, I, you know, from what I see and what I've learned in this space are entirely lifestyle problems. These are yes. not, you know, these are not um, things that are inherently related to race or, um, you know, or ethnicity or to do with class. This is entirely about how we are eating. And so we need to re-educate ourselves and we need to inspire and motivate people to find another way. Yeah. Oh, I know. And I love your passion for it. It comes across and, and I feel the same. And I think we are very much on the same page. Yeah. Yeah. So you must feel so excited that your kids are hopefully, you know, this is going to be a, a, just a nothing for them. Because I look at the, the younger generation and the foods that they eat and I think, oh, you uh, know, I, I, you know, I don't know. This is not good. But um, <laughs> your kids must be doing great. Like, how is school for them? How is, you know, their life um, with, uh, you know, and in, in eating the way that you do versus the way that classmates do. Yeah, I know a lot of kids I don't feel like eat any actual like real food. <laughs> I know some mm -hmm. kids do. I know not every parent out there is just throwing pop tarts their way, but I was a teacher, public school elementary teacher for 21 years. There's a lot of pop tarts being thrown at kids. I, I mean, mm -hmm. just junk, colorful cereal bars all day long. I watched them eat it for breakfast. I would watch them bring it for lunch. Kids would literally bring a, a sack full of candy. No kidding. I'm like, is that your lunch? Yes. I love it. I'm sure you do, darling. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, so my kids are good. They do have some vegetables. They eat very meat-based. If they want their stupid Brussels sprouts, they can have them. <laughs> uh, they, two of the kids do like sweet potatoes. It's fine if they want a sweet potato. They all three will eat some corn. But it's always next to a big piece of meat, mostly beef. Um, I think Annie's the only one that really likes chicken. They all love ribs. They all love steak. They all love most any type of really meaty, cheesy concoction I can come up with. They're, they're in. <laughs> they're actually really easy to feed and they love mm -hmm. meal times. I know some kids are like, I don't, do I have to eat? Do I have to eat? Holy cow. They are killing it i don't know what i'm going to do when they're teenagers but they really eat a lot mm. a lot but it's not snacky junk and i don't know we'll see how this plays out i don't know a lot of kids that didn't grow up with sugar so i don't know if they're going to go off to college someday and be like i'm out of the house and instead of experimenting with alcohol if they'll experiment with like skittles i don't know what's going to happen <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm as curious as everyone else, but at least while they're in my house, I'm not buying it. And mm -hmm. they don't have a taste for it at this point, which I think is really cool. Um, they had something the other day that was, it, it wasn't sugar, but it had a, I know what it was. It was a popsicle that somebody in the family had bought at the store. And it said on the front in big letters, Z, no sugar added, no sugar fruit juice oh, and so this family member was trying to be legit like really good mm. and the kids all hated these popsicles and I looked on the back and it was Splenda and they've never had Splenda of any type and they said it tasted like a chemical so I'm thinking things are going well a day <laughs> they didn't <laughs> like the sweetened popsicles they eat a lot of ice cream but it's just heavy cream 
with yeah. vanilla and yeah. i put um egg yolks in it we do that all the time and they think it's great but they haven't yeah. had any other ice cream so i don't know i'll keep you posted hmm. so far so good yeah i mean i feel like i hear parents um say well you know my kid is slim and they're you know into sports so it doesn't matter what they eat and i think oh i don't know i think it matters <laughs> i yeah. think it matters especially given how much trouble people having are having staying focused or dealing with depression anxiety it's like you know, there's a lot of um, negative things that can happen that are separate from, you know, weight. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're kids. Their parents are right. They probably could eat pretty much anything and weight not be an issue. I'm not feeding them this way because they have a weight problem <laughs> whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's just, you're right. Kids, I've worked with, gosh, a lot of kids. ADHD, behavior problems, just like you said, focus, being able to just sit and be at peace and have some attention whatsoever <laughs> is a very rare thing to see um yeah. and depression and anxiety in children is like out of control right now kids are not okay and i know that part of it has to do with everything they've been through in the last couple of years pandemic was but i think a lot of it was there even before that um kids were not really doing that well i don't think a lot it it's a kind of rare and precious thing when I would have a kid who was able to just sit and have a nice conversation and look happy without a video, <laughs> without a device, right? I mean, there's part of the problem without a device, without a lollipop, like just be a peaceful human is kind of a rare thing to see with kids. Um, that, that makes me sad. I think we could, yeah. I think we could do better. Kids need that fat so badly, and kids are just really not getting much fat in their diet these lollipops and popsicles and all that even if it was real ice cream right that would have some fat but it's mostly just throw them these little icy pops that's just straight sugar all the time they need some fat mm -hmm. yeah and it's it sucks that you know i mean we're we're swinging back and forth between like super low fat and then people who go all the way the other way ham fisted in but the other way um, is like deep fried stuff in seed oils. And so it's not, yep. you know, it's not better. And I, I've started to mm -hmm. get into watching like those travel um, shows where people go to like a country fair and they eat like, you know, these wildly decadent or crazy things. And yes. I'm looking for barbecue and stuff like that. But, you know, they've got like the deep fried, you know, Twinkies deep and all this everything. other stuff. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Oh and some God. things I think, oh man, if you just didn't use like the seed oil, this would be a perfect yeah. carnivore food. I would come and I would eat all of it, but yeah. you make it inedible by using those fats. Yeah. No, I, I didn't hear one thing that has changed about carnivore world since 2009 is I never used to hear anything about the oils. Like that wasn't, I think it was kind of just taken care of, you know, when you cut out, you're just eating steak. If you're eating steak and you're not even using salt, you're certainly not going to down it in canola oil, right? Like that's crazy. Mm -hmm. But I never heard any talk about it for several years. It's only been in the last few where it was like seed oils, this seed oils, that. And I'm like, what? And then I got you know thinking oh well i don't use those anyway but i was going out and ordering chicken wings here and there so i'm sure mm -hmm. i was getting some seed oils unless i was at buffalo wild wings and i usually wasn't back then i didn't know that that was would have been even better like i said i'd yeah. never even heard of seed oils um but then in the past several months back in january february we moved up here this was my first kind of seed oil experiment without really meaning to I was moving the family, gosh, almighty, with three little kids and trying to get them in school and things were just stressful. And I discovered this grocery store near here, a little local place called Howard's, and they make homemade chicken salad with like four ingredients. And they just list mayo. They don't say which mayo. So if they had put out the ingredients for the mayonnaise, we suddenly would have had a lot more ingredients. But it was like chicken, mayonnaise, salt, pepper, and it said relish, but I couldn't see it and I didn't taste it. And I was like, I took a few bites and realized oh, I bought it for the kids. It's always for the kids, right? And then I realized, my gosh, that's really good. It was really good. So I started eating this just because it was easy and it was delicious. And I didn't really 
I, I just cared about it being easy. And I started a day, I started getting back acne for the first time in years. And I was like, oh my gosh, it didn't have carbs. This wasn't carby. There was nothing sweet to it. I couldn't, like I said, you couldn't even see the relish if there was some in there. It was, I feel pretty certain, it must have been junky oil from that mayonnaise. That's the only thing I can figure. So I cut it out. My back's clear again, all is well, but ew. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow. So that is, that is a great, um, you know, testament. And yeah, like you, I always assume when people start talking about carnivore that, you know, we've taken care of the seed oils. And so yeah. sometimes people say to me, you know, why don't you talk about that more? And it's kind of like, well, how, why are you getting it? But there is mayonnaise. And yeah. in the beginning of going carnivore, like I, you know, mayonnaise is like a super easy way to increase your fat and find other ways to increase it. And when I, in the beginning, you know, before I understood to get meat that comes with fat, yeah. don't try to like buy fat and buy meat and put them together. Um, you know, I would want to like dip my bite of meat into something. And like, if you have a hot piece of meat and you dip it in butter, then you've got this liquid fat yes. that only so much fat is gonna stick to that piece of meat in True. its liquid form. But if you're using mayo, you can you can get a lot of fat to kind of stick with that piece of meat. So that was for me like the you know there was something really helpful about mayo. Yes. But then I you know I realized that this was a thing for me. And since I always had a lot of allergies, and um, so I've been sensitive to everything. So when I decided to do this, you know, I tried to be really strict because I figure, you know, I'm going to be irritated by everything. And I am I do know that I'm allergic to soy, which I'm going to assume means soybean oil, but I don't know. Yes. So, um. I, you know, I ended up cutting out the mayo. So I, I had a hard time in the beginning, like figuring out how to up the fat because I, you know, like liquid fat is not super helpful. Um, but so for everyone watching, I, I don't support using mayo. Um, there's some people who, who now like to make it from avocado oil. Yep. I don't know. Um, make your bacon A's. I wasn't very good at making that, so I didn't do that very often. Um, but, you know, for those out there who are more talented than me, make it, use it. Yes. Yeah, I have tried. There's Sir Kensington brand is an avocado oil mayonnaise. I've tried that. Mm -hmm. And Primal Kitchen makes one. Mm -hmm. They're both pretty good. I don't have a lot of use for mayonnaise anymore <laughs> just because uh, I do buy a pretty fatty steak or I just slice up some cold butter off to the side and then just add it sort of bite by bite so it doesn't turn all liquidy. Uh, but my kids, they like some chicken salad here and there or um, like deli meat roll ups with some mayonnaise and mustard. So I, we all know that Duke's is the best mayonnaise. Let's just go ahead and say <laughs> it was for me. Duke's was the best one. But I do for them now. I buy either Sir Kensington or Primal mm -hmm. Kitchen yeah. in hopes that it's better. I don't know, but I, I hope so. Yeah. They don't yeah. have back acne, at least. So there's that. <laughs> yeah. I think Hellman's, that was my favorite. But yeah, it's. Oh. Um, yeah. But, you okay. know, or, well, if we go back to childhood, Miracle Whip which I didn't oh, understand God. why Miracle Whip was so awesome until I later learned it's sugar. got sugar added. <laughs> so like, much ah, sugar. Ah, ah. Everything with sugar yeah. is better, right? Um, yeah. Can I tell you one quick story? I know yeah. our time's probably about up. Talking about things with sugar. Um, I did not realize until I was probably a teenager that everybody did not do this. In my family, I told you we had uh, the sugary little oatmeal packets, right? Like strawberries and cream, you know, the packets or cinnamon toast crunch every day. This is just what we had with skim milk. That was breakfast. One or the other. Do you want oatmeal or cereal? That was every day. The question. And no matter what we picked, are you ready for this? You are not ready for this, but we're going to, I'm going to tell you my mom. And I mean, my mom is wonderful. If you, She's never going to see this, but I just have to throw it out, out there. She's great. She would take out a tub of Cool Whip. Cool Whip. You're familiar with this product, right? And cover the entire top of either oatmeal or cereal, whichever one we had picked, the entire top with a thick layer of Cool Whip every single day. <sighs> and I thought, and that's how my parents ate it. That's how my brother ate it. That's how we all ate it. 
and nobody ever questioned this. So in high school, when people talk about cereal, I just assume everybody was doing that. And somebody's oh, like, God. did you say Cool Whip? Yeah. We went through truck tons of Cool Whip. That was our Tupperware, was of course, all the empty Cool Whip bowls. We just kept them stacked up in the cabinets. That was Tupperware. Yeah. Have you ever in your life? And then meanwhile, you got this one like chubby kid going, man, I wish, why are my thighs so big, right? Hello, more Cool Whip, anyone? Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> So maybe, oh my gosh no. that yeah so, but that's not that's not the craziest the craziest that's, thing i've heard but okay. wow that is that's a lot of that sugar is, that is a lot of chemical too because cool whip is not just heavy whipping cream like whipped up oh no it is oh wow no. that's a wow that's a concoction right there yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's a lot more expensive the- than just buying sugar and having that yeah, wow. thinking back, like, was the cinnamon toast crunch not sweet enough? <laughs> Whip out the cool. <laughs> that's crazy. But that was my childhood. So that's what started me. I mean, I had a severe sweet tooth. When people say to me, yeah. I don't think I could do carnivore because I like sugar. Hello. I didn't get to 260 pounds not liking sugar. I loved it. I, I grew up having intense amounts of sugar every single morning. That's how I kicked off a day. Yeah. And so it, I know it is hard and I don't say lightly when I think people should just, just give up sugar. I had the shakes for two weeks. I couldn't think about anything else. I've heard you talk about how very hard it was for you too. Yeah. So I do understand it is not, it is not a small ask, Yeah, but it also can absolutely change your life too. Yeah. yeah. And I think it's it's important to frame it like it is a drug. So, you know, you yep. should expect withdrawals and um and it's okay. I mean, you know, it is we 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 um acknowledge and we support people when they give up cocaine or heroin or alcohol. Well, I I am offering you, anybody watching, the same level of um support, encouragement, kudos, all of that for giving up sugar because it is in on par with all those other super addictive drugs it is that hard to give up so yeah it's okay (laughs) yeah and i would not personally know that because i've never been an alcoholic i i have never tried any drug harder than caffeine (laughs) but so i wouldn't know but i have had people in my groups to say I was an alcoholic and recovered. I was addicted to this and to this and to this. And people have said that quitting sugar was as hard, if not harder. And I think it's because of the constant queuing all around us and how socially acceptable it is. And the fact that it's, I mean, it hits a lot of targets in the brain. So yeah, people say it's just as hard. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, you know, and and it's a lot that we have to um, uh, educate ourselves on that it is a problem. Because like when I was growing up, even though my my grandmother really focused on, you know, providing healthy meals. So, you know, dinner was always a meat, a starch and a vegetable. Um, You know, lunch was a sandwich, but there was like fresh meat to be in the sandwich. And um, but breakfast, I I always hated. grits and so for you know until i was about nine or ten you know she was try grits in every possible you know way to entice me to eat them um but one of her favorite things was to put syrup on it and it was like oh man you are ruining the syrup with these grits (laughs) (laughs) i don't like yes Yeah. So I, you know, I think even as a kid if someone had told me like you cannot eat carbs or veggies I would have loved that. Um, you know, I love sugar and candy, but aside yeah. from that, I much prefer to just eat meat and no other stuff. Like I did not awesome. like the grits. I did not like the sides, but, um, but once we took out grits and I didn't like milk, so I never drank, um, drank milk and I didn't eat cereal and stuff like that. Um, there was no more options for breakfast. You oh. know, it was like a muffin, you know, or a donut if I were lucky. Um, so that I think began really my um, increasing weight is that I didn't have 
I didn't start with something that that worked. Like if I had started with scrambled eggs and bacon, yes. I it, my day would have got, looked very different than me starting, um, you know, with nothing or you know with a muffin, which is more yeah. likely what happened. Yeah, and that's same for a lot of kids now. And I can say yeah. after working, I had cafeteria duty for so many years <laughs> at school for breakfast. Breakfast cafeteria duty, you know, it killed me. Because here I am, I would have to go around opening all the packages for the little kids who can't open stuff. Donut balls, they literally served funnel cake, like it was the fair, but for breakfast, covered in powdered sugar. Oh my sugar. God, I'm so funnel. jealous. <laughs> if no. I were a kid, I would have loved that. Oh, they I do? I know what a horrible thing that horrible. is. Horrible. Oh my God, yes. to get funnel cake at school, not even having to go to a special place for it. Wow. Yeah, they, <laughs> yes funnel cake in the colorful cereal bars with of course their container of skim milk and orange juice that they were required to take and i would just sit there and look and think my gosh if you really add all that up how many carbs are we giving this teeny tiny short person to start their day with and then i would get them later in music class and you know they're acting straight crazy by that point and it's like well i mean no wonder (laughs) but you couldn't Nobody could have scrambled up one egg in all the years I worked in there. Never Mm. once were there scrambled eggs, bacon. Occasionally there was a sausage thing, but it was sausage on a stick wrapped in a pancake batter like a corn dog. So that's how you got your sausage. (laughs) Oh my gosh. It's an, it really, I'll tell you, public school nutrition is a train wreck. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. And I think how do how do we get to a point where these things are considered food? Yeah. Like I I don't know. I don't know how we got there and how we move away from there. And I think that people assume food has to be processed. Like the idea of getting things that are not you know somehow transformed to have shelf life to uh be able to fit into you know uh, a toaster oven or some other kind of device yep. that then it's no it's not food and they don't know what to do with it so that's depressing <laughs> yeah. and i'm sure it, people say it always comes down to cost but i'm thinking my gosh eggs are still pretty cheap just scramble some eggs <laughs> Mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I'm sure there is much that goes into it. I think the real thing is, is that when there's a huge line of kids, they can just throw cereal bars at them and it's easy mm-hmm. and carbs are pretty cheap. That, I'm sure that's true, but it is sad. I wish kids yeah. could get nutrition. And, and I know I worked at a school where the, the food was pretty much free for most everybody. It was like a free and reduced. So I'm glad, you know, I guess that's better than kids starving, but I, I every day just showed up with a little glimmer of hope that m- there might be an egg. Just just give them an egg yeah yeah Mm -mm. well like the worries about food have changed so much in the last in you know i guess the in one or two generations so you know when i i guess when we were kids or before we were kids the concern was like getting calories at all now you know you don't really have a situation where people have access to nothing they have access to you know things that are non-nutritive really right yeah I know. maybe someday i'll go back to the schools and just start sneaking kids bacon i'm just like carrie <laughs> here take this, take this coach don't tell <laughs> i know right yeah, yeah. well before we wrap up i want i didn't ask you the things that i should have asked you about your meat cookies and how you eat now and how long will you be eating this way will you eat carnivore <laughs> forever and do you see, uh, you know, further evolutions in like the things that you choose to eat on a day-to-day basis? Well, I do eat a lot of what I call meat cookies, which are just burger patties. And it's because I feel like for a lot of people, it's very accessible, whether it's in a drive through or the frozen bags at Costco and Walmart, people can get them. And, you know, at this stage of my life, it would be pretty easy for me to eat other things too. But there was definitely a long period where that's what I could afford. That is what I had time for as a mom with babies. And there are other people still there. So I do still include them quite a bit because it's cheap and easy. And I still like them. They're delicious. <laughs> and, and it's a meat cookie. It's fun. It's easy to eat. You can eat them on the go. What's not to love? Uh, I, I also now still include plenty of steak. 
I sometimes have fish, you know, like it's not like I only eat burger patties these days. I include mm-hmm. other things. As for if I will always eat this way, I would think I don't see any major changes unless something goes horribly wrong. And I'm like, wow, I suddenly feel like garbage on this all meat diet. I feel really good. And if you include those first five years, which I didn't feel all that great. So I don't normally include those. Okay, let's leave those out. Almost 13 years of actually feeling great. I I don't see that changing anytime soon. No. Yeah. Yeah. So people say, oh, it's not sustainable. But you say it is. Well, it is for me. I don't have to be hungry. That's my number one thing. Please do not make me go hungry. I hate that so much. I did it for a long time and I don't ever want to go back to being hungry. Um, I don't want to have to eat a lean cuisine. So on this diet, I'm not hungry. There's no lean cuisines involved and I sleep well at night. I feel happy. Uh, I, I just don't have any reason right now to mix it up. I'm really just satisfied with everything and Mm -hmm. I am open to the idea of doing something different if that were to change but so far so good so how do you think a newbie should get started well if somebody is truly eating a like all the carbs standard American diet you know there's two ways to do this you can either rip a band-aid and just try carnivore but I feel like if it's just especially if it's just weight Okay, so let's say this. Somebody's having extreme health problems or they're desperate and they need to do this as an elimination diet. It might be best to like, okay, well, let's just get you to a baseline of feeling good. Let's go pretty strict for a couple of weeks and see if that fixes things, get you feeling good. And then maybe you can add some stuff back in. There's sort of that elimination method. And then there's the, well, if you're just wanting to lose weight, you might be able to just go low carb and get some good results. And if that takes you where you want to be, there are certainly some people out there doing great on low carb. Um, You might need to go a little lower after that and sort of do it like the slowly reduce. And then if they want to try keto and then, you know, if that gives you everything you want, awesome, go keto. (laughs) I'm not out here like the everybody must be carnivore. And I know you Mm -hmm. aren't that way either. If you're getting, I heard you say something. Um, How good do you want to feel is basically what it comes down to. And if you can have this certain diet and feel as good as you want to feel, then wonderful. This is what I need to do in order to feel as good as I want to feel. Um, and so, yeah, getting as much garbage out of your life food-wise as possible, and bringing in as much meat and whole foods as you could possibly want to eat, maybe learning some new recipes, get a tribe. I know you offer a support group and I do too. There are plenty of them out there that would to offer tips on whether it's cooking or social situations and just how to make that transition. Um, but I think a tribe helps. I, I certainly did way better once I found Charles Washington. It made all the difference for me to have that group of people versus that five years when I was just like going through it blind, not eating enough fat, doing so many crazy things. If I had found him five years earlier, I could have saved a lot of heartache. Oh, that, so that is awesome. Yes, I, we both have uh, communities. I've started the uh, Carnivore Accelerator community. And basically, I want to give you all the cheat codes so you can skip all of the, you know, experimentation and mistakes that, you know, I made in the beginning and that I see other people make. Can you tell everybody about your community? So in case um, people watching want to join yours as well. Yeah, so I do six classes per month and they eat meet once per week and each group is maxed out at 30 people I really that was my classroom size was about 30 that's where I feel very comfortable 30 faces on a screen feels great to me I know some people do much bigger or smaller Um, but six groups of 30 and they meet for a month via zoom and then on Facebook in a private group of just those 30 that little cohort and it's on my link tree on Instagram Kelly underscore Hogan 91 And it's probably the first thing that shows up is like carnivore coaching. And I do have some people who are coming from standard American diet. They are not ready for total carnivore yet. That is okay. And then there are some people who have been carnivore for ages and they're just like tweaking and adding some cool like movement challenges. And they're more there to support other people and just be a part of a community. Mm -hmm. So everybody's welcome. Nice. 
That's awesome. And I, I love that. And I do think it is really important to have community. And, you know, and frankly, that was why I even started putting myself out there and, you know, creating content and stuff was to draw people to me because I was like, uh, well, I named myself Black Carnivore because I wondered if there were any other Black people doing this because I didn't see anybody that looked like me when I was really, you know, looking around the community. And uh, so having that name actually drew people to me. And that was, um, you know, really wonderful to to begin this community and then to, you know, continue it so that lots of other people could find benefit as well. But um, it is really important to uh, to see people like you, to see people who are having success like you. And I, I think, I mean, I love to read like the, the scientific stuff and understand the mechanisms by which this stuff works. But I think most people are not really <laughs> interested in that. So, right. you know, it's going to be like the testimony of like your neighbor down the street, the lady at church, you know, your cousin's friend, you know, your aunt or whatever. That's what is really going to be most, um, uh, you know, interesting and most convincing, I think, for more people. So that's why I want to try to, you know, create community, create content that um, provides that inspiration for people. Yeah, oh, I'm with you. I think people will say, oh, it's just an N equals one. That's just one anecdote, anecdotal evidence. I'm like, that's, that's a person. That's a real life. And people want to hear more about that than a rat study, honestly. <laughs> You know, rat yeah. studies are cool, but I don't know that many rats. We want to know, this is a people study. You and I, mm -hmm. this is what happens to real life humans when we cut out junk and eat meat. And I do think people want to know more about that. And I mm -hmm. do too. I want to hear other people. Like it, it does my heart so much good every week to just get to interact with people who are on a similar path and can share their stories as well. 100%. Well, thank you so much for coming and sharing today. This has been, uh, this was such a fun conversation. Um, I, I hope that um, <laughs> we were able to cover things that are interesting to you, the viewers. And uh, where, if people want to contact you, where can they find you, Kelly? Probably on Instagram the most or on YouTube, My Zero Carb Life. If you just type in My Zero Carb Life in any search engine, and maybe throw the word Hogan on there. You should be able to find everything. <laughs> it's been My Zero Carb Life for several years now. That MyZeroCarbLife.com is what started off as the blog and now YouTube channel too. Fantastic. All right, everybody. Well, um, I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you all next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.